Next, we talked to retiring State Senator Kyle McCarter about his nomination as U.S. Ambassador to Kenya. This runs about 10 minutes. Senator Kyle McCarter, thanks for joining us on the O-Night Channel. And we are here uh, on a uh, kind of a momentous day in your career. You are now officially nominated to be the United States Ambassador to Kenya. Can we? That, that's going to surprise, I think, a number of people. Let's walk back a little bit and just kind of give us an overview about how did this come to be. Well, um, you know, th this is a... I see this as kind of the uh, the next step of service. Uh, I really do. I think almost nine and a half years in the in the Illinois Senate and has been great preparation for me to to do the job. Uh, so if confirmed, uh, you know, by the by the Senate by the Senate, uh, I, I I believe uh, it's a great opportunity for me to use a lot a lot of the things that I've learned here in the Illinois Senate. Um, I, I think back of some of the committees that I at first didn't like, and I thought, you know, public health. What am I going to do public health? Well, I'm going to get to deal with a lot of public health now, uh, you know, uh, with the nation and uh, labor, all kinds of you know issues. I think this has been a really good experience for me, and, and I and I have to say that without what I've learned in the Illinois Senate, I would not be as prepared as I needed to be to, uh, to do a good job um, uh, in Kenya. Let me back up because of it. People might not put one and one together here and go, what, what does a guy from Lebanon, Illinois, know about being the ambassador to Kenya? And I was surprised to learn when we dug more into your background one, you speak Swahili. <laughs> which <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. And and the fact of the matter is, you actually have a whole lot of history in in country in Kenya. Let's talk a little bit too. Bring your dad in because that's where it started, right? Your dad was sure, a yeah. minister in the uh, Air Force. Yeah, saying? my dad. My dad was a chaplain in the Air Force, and then when he came back from Vietnam, he just had a heart uh, for suffering children. And uh, he decided he was going to do something. So as he was pastoring churches, got, got out of the military, pastoring churches, he was continually going overseas to Africa and India. He was teaching actually in Africa in, in a place um, I call the Kaga Rural Training Center, which was a Methodist-affiliated group, which ended up becoming the Methodist University. And the students were having a hard time because in their home area, which was the area of Tharaka, which was downwards, uh, in the lower elevation, uh, there was a cholera epidemic, and uh, so he 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 was my dad was just a very practical guy, and he said, "I've got no one to teach, and they're suffering, so I'm going to go help them." And so he he took his uh, small pickup and started driving down the road, picking up people off the road, helping them into the hospitals, importing tetracycline to help them get through this cholera epidemic, and that was the start of a work there with a shipping container full of food. Uh, he started feeding the people and helping the people. Um, and when he came back, I, my wife and I moved there with our daughter, who was three at the time. And uh, for two years, we built a health care clinic there. And so, um, and then, and then we... Then how did you finance that? I mean, it, the, the motivation is commendable, but how did you actually make that work where you're so far away from your roots? Uh, and when what, approximately what time frame was this that you were this starting? Was, this was in uh, 1987 and 88, and um, and so we we built that clinic. And I I mean I was that by just by hand and labor and sweat hand, equity. We had I had a lot of help, but it was hard to get materials down there. There was no place to live. I actually slept on a table outside with a mosquito net hanging down from the tree because it was so hot. And uh, I'd take my motorcycle down for, for the week and then come back on the, the weekend where I had a house in, in Meru where my uh, Victoria uh, stayed. And uh, she actually was pregnant during that second year. And then we actually, uh, our son, uh, Zachary, uh, was born there in a place called Kajabi. And so uh, that was, you know, that's, that was the start of our married life with, with two small kids. And uh, it wasn't easy. But it was uh, it was a great lesson, and uh, we didn't know at that time that we'd ever come back. Uh, when we when we decided to come back and get into business, my parents my parents then moved there, and 
uh, started up a, um, a primary school. And then just six years ago, actually five, about just over five years ago, Victoria and I took this same organization, Each One Feed One, over uh, as my, my father and mother were retiring. And we started the uh, children's home there. So there's about 43 kids now living there on campus and that, that are either orphaned, abandoned, abused. And uh, so we... Uh, so just uh, this compound is what, 10 acres, I about think? 10 acres, and we get another 10 acres uh, uh, aside from that that we've just, that we've just purchased to, to uh, house our older boys and, and, a, and, a, and a farm and a, and a vocational training center. So you have a health care clinic and a school. Yes, uh, two through eight. And then we've got our, our older kids that are graduating, going in the, actually going into high school. We, we have them at different high schools. And, uh, and we've got a couple in college. We've got uh, one that's finished. Another one's going to finish here in a year. So uh, God's really blessed that work. And it's been uh, with the help of a lot of individuals, friends of ours, churches. Uh, we've, we've done so much with so little there. And, um, uh, but now, you know, I've, I've got another opportunity. And that's, uh, if, if confirmed, to serve as, as the ambassador and do even more for, for that country. You know, we, we love those people. and uh, I don't know how many people would, ambassadors or people nominated, would have that much. Uh, you know, they might be professionals in the State Department, but they don't have the history, let's say, in country necessarily. I, I want to just briefly, before we go uh, touch base, it started with your dad, as you mentioned. Yeah. Now, sadly, your father just passed on, but uh, tell us, did, did you have the opportunity to tell him that you were being nominated? Yeah, you know, my dad had dementia, and so, you know, they say every day is a, the good news is that every day is a good new day, right? And so uh, my dad, um, on a Thursday, I, uh, I talked to him, and every time I talked to my dad on the phone, he said, son, I'm so glad to talk with you. You made my day. He was always so happy every time you talked to him. And uh, so I said, well, Dad, let me, let me pray with you, because I always prayed with him when I get off the phone call. And that was a Thursday. Now, Friday morning, I heard uh, from, uh, from Washington that, uh, that the uh, letter of Agramo had come back in, uh, from Kenya and that this is going to move forward. And I got to call my dad Friday morning and say, Dad, this, this, this is going to happen. And he was so happy. And uh, I, I was out of town. I flew back that Friday, Saturday morning, got up. And then heard that uh, my father passed away that morning, and so uh, you know I, I I saw that as a as, as a real you know him saying okay you got it you carry this now you do something even bigger than I did and so uh, I accept that I accept that challenge to his le- his legacy. Uh. It's an amazing story, and as I said, I, I doubt very many people who have been nominated, uh, particularly in, in our, the nations of Africa, probably that we have people available on the bench with that kind of history that you bring to the table. Let's talk just uh, because time is always short, but uh, in your 10 years, it's been a tumultuous time in Illinois history. What would you say to people, I mean, about your history here in the Illinois Senate uh, and that time period and the different governors and the different issues you've had to deal with? Yeah, I, I think this has been a tough 10 years um, for everybody. And, um, you know, I sure do. I, I had hoped I could have got more done. I do. Uh, um, but I sure have learned a lot from it. Uh, I've, I've, I've been up a lot of, up against a lot of battles. Uh, I may have stopped a few bad things that, that wouldn't have been good for Illinois. I, I can't say that I've been successful at passing a lot of things uh, because being in the minority and even the super minority has been very difficult. And, and I think this part, the partisanship has, has got to a point now that we, it's got to stop. Um, I, mean, I mean, I have a party. I, have a, I believe in a platform. But at some point, we've got to do something good for the people. At some point, we've got to say, this is, these are good principles and policies that work for people, and we're going to put these things aside. Uh, we're going to quit look, you know, always looking for power and put these things aside and do these things that translate in what's, into what's good for the people. And, and I think that's good politics. I think if we do that, you're going to go back home and people are going to say, hey, you delivered. I don't care what party you are. You delivered for, for us. And so uh, I hope that's 
what, uh, you know, I hope that happens in the future. I've tried my hardest to do that. I mean, I've, I've tried not to come out as, as, uh, as a Republican. As, I mean, I mean I, I've tried to do what I think was in the best interest of the people. And I think if together we do that, I think we could get a lot more done. And uh, I, I mean, because we, we've got to do something to take us away from bankruptcy, away from this dysfunctional way that Illinois government has been, you know, has gone gone about here in the last decade and, and beyond and, be, and before that. So uh, I I was just, in, I've, I've attempted to encourage my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, let's just do something good for the people because that's good politics. Uh, presuming you're nominated, you'll go to uh, be the ambassador to Kenya. Um, is there a term on how does that work? How long do you serve? No, no real term is typically about three years. And, uh, you know, my, my goal is to do the best job I can. And, you know, when I was in high school, nobody thought I'd ever be in the Senate. People in the Senate never thought I would be ambassador. And, uh, but I just, you know what, I'm going to serve the people that I've been, I've been given right in front of me. I'm going to serve them the best I can, do the best job I can. And at the end of that, uh, I, I hope that uh, whoever is in charge... <laughs> You know, whoever's in office will believe that uh, I can do uh, I can do the job again. I have uh, often said to young people the age old question, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And I think the fascinating thing, and you illustrate it, you don't have to be one thing. You've been a businessman, uh, a missionary, I would say, uh, yeah. a senator, and and now you're going to be uh, hopefully, if confirmed, the ambassador. Kamal Carter, you're a shining example of some of the good people in Illinois politics. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for doing that, having me.